Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Best of God, written by 107 Zombly. This isn't happening. This, honestly, can't be happening. And by that you are being the only member of the Overseer Team on site, command of this station, including all military operations from this point forward, fall solely on you. Seriously, what the hell? James stood there, so expectant for a reply. You serious? Is this something to joke about? His reply came with a slight tilt of his head. I suppose he was serious. God damn it! First the Xeno show up three weeks before we expected, then all shuttles in Vindicta Station are rerouted, and now I'm left in charge of the greatest superweapon in the history of man, in orbit on a mere hair's width from the surface of the sun. Honestly, it's been a rather terrible day so far. Seeing as how everyone in Command Center have started to stare, I suppose I have to do something about this. How long do we have until our next sighting of Earth? Information was never a good choice. Should be in the first few minutes, sir, echoed back from one of the small desks near the room's entrance. A woman that must have been twice my age. God knows what her name is, though. I can hardly remember my friends, let alone my co-workers. Though, I'm sure that we were introduced at some point. If I keep going, I'll probably get away with not mentioning I don't remember a lot, though. And the ETA and the last checks on the rotors. Just finished up, actually. This time the voice came from somewhere closer, but I couldn't quite tell who exactly said it. With all these faces looking up from their work areas, I just looked in the direction of a voice and nodded in acknowledgement. In that case, sir, I asked that everyone move to firing position. The nerve center blew rather suddenly into a frenzy, not that it wasn't understandable. With a sea of people turning from a still water into a current, the station's intercom boomed to life with a voice sounding with incredible urgency. This is station command. Orders to prepare to fire. All non-essential personnel are to move to section C until the end of the end of action. This is not a drill. All crews begin safety checklists and await instructions. If I recall correctly, Section C was where all of the escape craft were located. I guess if something goes wrong, anyone in that section might have a chance of making it out. Probably. James's hand was on his earpiece the whole time, though, and I could see him listening so intently to whatever was coming through it. In the same moment, that intercom grew silent again. He began to speak to all of us. We've just received radio communication from Earth. The room fell silent almost eminently. Any news from the home had to be either good or very, very bad. And we all knew it. And I didn't like the way that he was glancing at me. There was no way it was good news. Lunar Command, he stopped for a moment, seemingly trying to process the very idea of his statement. Lunar Command, no, no longer exist. For a moment, my mind continued to drift in the quiet. Just after those words hit me, and then my stomach dropped to the floor. Earth has got comms with us in an attempt to avoid alerting hostile forces of our position. We are instructed to continue forward, and that we are the last line of defense. I could see the sadness grow in the faces of my peers. Vec! I could feel the tears welling up in my eyes. Henry was stationed on Lunar HQ. No, nonsense. I'll see my brother when this is over. He'll be back at our apartment when I come home, with the heat turned the way up like a psychopath he is, trying to bake us alive. Carter, you okay, man? Oh, of course! He got sent home a day early, because they decided they didn't need him any longer. Carter! And I'll give him some crap next time I see him. The bastard couldn't even do anything useful for the Federation, right? Carter! I snapped back to reality, with James standing just beside me. The sadness seemed to swell back down, like a trough of a wave. Then it was replaced with something else. Anger. Do we have sight on Earth? It didn't matter now. There was no time to grieve. A time when I could wallow all I liked in pity and depression. But that time was not now. This was a time for something darker. A time for age. Yes, sir, another faceless voice. 
Release clamps on warp rotor alpha. Releasing clamps A and B, gave the reply back, followed with an intercom screaming to life again, a long siren. We all knew what that meant. I didn't intend to be in this position. I didn't want to be in this damn space station while my friends and family die so far away from me, fighting a hopeless battle for survival. Begin magnetic rotor acceleration on Alpha. Beginning acceleration. But damn it all, if I would take the opportunity that I may receive. Rotor Alpha up to 1300 RPMs, holding. Yet another reply. But I was hardly paying attention. The whole outer ring of the station was groaning with the strain. Something so foreign to it. I'm gonna kill all those genocidal monsters. As many as I can, goddammit. Release clamps and warp rotor beta and begin acceleration. Though my voice wavered before, was unsure, now I spoke with authority. Begin targeting process. Aim for the vessels nearest to us. Understood. Beginning targeting process. Rotor beta is stable at 1300. This is it. This is my only moment. But in it, I shall be all-powerful. Load ammunition! I nearly yelled. We'll get those alien effects if it's the last thing I do. Target incomplete. The voice seemed a little uneasy. Slug is loaded, ready to fire. Another very idea made me clench my fist in anticipation. Fire! Another longer siren sounded, and the whole station seemed to scream from its very construction. And then... From the video feed of the barrel came the image of a five-ton uranium slug being carried on into vacuum by a thing of madness, pulled forward with a partial warp bubble, accelerating the mass hunk of metal as though falling towards the planet, but never being able to smack the ground. Nine minutes until impact. Now we wait. Five minutes until impact. And the longer we waited, the more my entire self wanted to scream for the loss. Three minutes to impact, for the loss of everything. Families, friends, enemies. Two minutes to impact, the loss of our generation. One minute, I picked up the intercom. Thirty seconds, and I began to speak. Gorak sat at his post, watching the space around him. The molten moon was quite the sight, not something one saw every day. But even more impressive was the fleet his race had prepared, all in the name of destroying such a young race. I speak to you today, not as a man giving orders, but as the one who is willing to project his anger. He thought it such a shame. The war had been rather dull in all honesty. The primitives were so obsessed with the kinetic weaponry, seemingly blind to the fact that they were ineffective as objects with mass could not feasibly be accelerated to speeds that would be required to make them useful in the vastness of the void. And I bring forth to you all the idea that we are the mouthpiece of humanity. No, what could be expected from such an unevolved creatures, really? They had hardly just invented hyperspace travel when they'd been found. We are the rage against the injustice brought upon us. But as Gorak was lost deep in his thought, the ship brought his attention to an anomaly. We are the dying breath of our world. This was a rather odd to him, something he had never seen before in all these years. The seeds of all that has ever been sown, finally grown. It was a distortion of space-time itself, traveling towards the fleet as it approached the marble of the planet this poor species called home. We are the fists of an enraged god. And it was accelerating. And we, getting closer to the fleet, bring. And nothing could stop it. Death. The skies over Earth exploded into a bright display of molten shrapnel, the slug hitting an alien cruiser with such force that it seemed to spontaneously turn to liquid sending tremendously large hunks of material through anything even remotely close, obliterating entire battle groups in an instant. It was like a new star had been born where the fleet had once stood, and any ships unaffected by the projectiles were ripped to pieces by the distortion that has carried it here. Hulls attempting to accelerate in several different directions as the bubble passed through them, leaving a trail 
of destruction in its wake. And on station, Vindicta, Carter sank to his knees. The names of those humans may be forgotten, but their deed would live on forever. The first strike of retaliation against the enemies, against extinction. End of the story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just like to give a quick thanks to the T5 channel members and patrons. Lithia, Parky, Feudic Yol, Meridian 117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Angry Marine, Lord Azrakal, and White Van 420.